So I think this panel should be interesting to do a lot of you guys, um, because as this region is growing uh, rapidly, uh, in order for, for you guys as companies to grow with the market, uh, investments are, are key, right? Uh, it takes money to make money. Um, so, um, so the cool thing is we have three developers today. We have Joy Entertainment, Altitude Games, and Instant Studio, and they all brought one of their investors, one of their, uh, one of their uh, seed investors with them. Um, so for Instant Studio, um, that's uh, Incubasia, hands the buck, hands the buck, high five man, like you're the only other Dutch guy at this conference with me. <laughs> okay, he is based in Singapore, so it's not that far for him. <laughs> and uh, Gabby from Altitude Games uh, brought uh, Nick Snoledo from uh, Surpass. Thank you for coming. Hello, everyone. Like, uh, I, th I uh, know you're a rock star uh, where you come from, uh, Nick, so it's uh, fantastic that you can make it. And uh, Joy Entertainment, you brought uh, our member uh, Poda with you. you. You attend all of our conferences uh, lately, yeah. so it's fantastic to have you uh, again. Yeah. So I'll take my seat. So we are the biggest panel here today. We're seven. <laughs> So, um, so uh, what we're going to be doing is um, they're going to very quickly introduce themselves and then um, uh, um, I'm going to talk to, uh, case by case, I'm going to talk the, to the studio and to the investor and uh, we're going to find out more about like how do you get investments, uh, what should you be pitching, what do investors expect from you and so it should be very insightful. So uh, guys, give a, give, give a sh short uh, self-introduction. Yeah, thanks, Maxim. So, um Thank you for having me here. My name is Hans de Bak. I'm from Amsterdam, based in, um, in Singapore. Um, I'm a partner of Incubation Venture. We invest in early stage technology companies in the, of course, gaming space, but also fintech, social media, and enterprise solutions. Thank you, Hans. Hello, I'm, I'm Gerald uh, from, from Inzen. So, so my, my background is I've been in the games industry for 11 years now. I started in 2004 uh, in mobile, and um, and so I've I've had a career in designing games, producing games. Uh, I've also worked for the government in Singapore to on their funding policy and funding initiatives, and that's how I, I began to have a strategic view of the industry. And um, uh, the the roots of Inzen are actually in the MIT Game Lab, which was uh, uh, which I worked for just just immediately before that, uh, where. We worked on uh, designing play experiences, re really unique play experiences for different audiences. And that sort of seeded our, our entry into, into China, which, which we're doing now. So, yeah, that's us. Thanks, Gerald. Yeah, yeah maybe we can uh, keep uh, one microphone per duo, basically. All right. Um, uh, so morning, everyone. My name is Gabi Dizon, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Altitude Games. So we're a pretty new company. We started in Mar March of 2014 and are developing our first game. I've been around the game industry in Southeast Asia for a long time. I started making games in 2003 and I've been part of several studios since then. Also had my own game company before. So like for me, this is just like what I've always wanted to do and it's continuing it with, with Altitude. Uh, I'm Nix from Surpass. We're based in the Philippines. So Surpass is the first uh, mobile consumer technology company that is listed in the Philippine Stock Exchange. Uh, it invests in companies that we can hopefully take to our market and as well as the other markets that we're expanding to. Uh, on a personal basis, I also invest in a lot of technology startups. Hi, uh, I'm Zhang and I'm uh, from Chow Entertainment, uh, a game developer still based in Ho Chi Minh, Vietnam. So my background, uh, I graduated as a programmer, but I joined uh, GameLab like 2007 as a tester. Then I applied to game designer position and then producers. And after six years working in GameLab Vietnam, I and my, my colleagues decided to we set up the game company, and we we left GameLab in 2013, and we. We found Chow Entertainment, and after that, we focused mainly on online mobile games, especially 3D online games for mobile. Hi, everybody. I'm Kwang, a CEO of Abuta and co-founder of Abuta as well. Uh, our company is a content distribution platform in Vietnam, 
and we had more than 15, uh, 15 million users for both iOS and Android. And we have developers in Vietnam to distribute their content besides Google Play and iTunes through our network. We connect with many other channels. We ha also have a social gaming platform on Clan to support uh, the developer to engage their user with their game. Uh, I'm, I myself have been at uh, more than uh, nine years in the mobile industry in Vietnam and from the telco uh, VAS service and anything else. And from 2010, I focus on the mobile uh, for smartphone content as well. That's it. Thanks, guys. Um, so the interesting thing as well is that these two are based in Singapore, they're based in the Philippines, and they're based in Vietnam. So uh, they're completely different case scenarios. Um, so that's uh, that's very interesting. So uh, I'll start with you guys. Um, so Gerald, um, do you actually do you remember when you guys how you guys met? Like how do you actually how do you actually get in touch with your with your with your first investor? <laughs> All right. So so the, the interesting thing is. Uh, um, it, the, the seed of it was, uh, Hans was actually introduced to me from a former colleague in government. where uh, and, and that's how we first met. We first met when, when I, was, uh, I was at the Singapore MIT Gambit Game Lab. Mm -hmm. uh, I was heading up strategy, operations, and finance. And um, my, my former colleague at the MDA in government said, you know, there, there's this new um, serial entrepreneur investor in town who wants to understand the industry in the region, understand where Singapore is at within the industry as well. And, and, and so, so she connected us. Uh, okay. Yeah, and, and uh, uh, so, yeah, and then Hans came to visit the lab and then he asked, actually when he saw what we had, the operation that we had, he asked, uh, it was quite interesting because he asked me then, can I invest in this? Okay. Right, <laughs> so, so but we weren't at the time. We were a government-funded entity. There, there was uh, yeah. all right. So you basically met through your network. Uh, yeah, got in touch with Hans. Yeah. And so at the moment when you got in, in touch with Hans, uh, what did you have to show him? Did you have a, a viable product ready? Did you, did you have a test product? Did you have a game uh, to show him? Um, or what, what did you have uh, at the point when you so, met Hans? So the, the thing that we had was actually, we, I knew Hans for a year before we started the case of InZen Studio. Uh, and Hans and I had, had sort of been talking a lot uh, about the, where the industry was at, our views on things. Um, so uh, when I met Hans, InZen Studio wasn't, it wasn't formed or the, 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 the structure wasn't there yet. Um, it, it was when, so, so we caught up on a regular basis. Uh, that's on the on the on the just because we we sort of agreed with each other's views on the industry and we liked exchanging that. So important lesson: keep in touch with each other. Yeah, keep, keep in, in touch, touch with, with with everybody. Yeah, and really, so I in there I got to understand Hans's uh, thought process, and and what he saw uh, w was moving in the industry. At the same time, though, uh, me and the the core team of the the Singapore MIT Gambit Game Lab. Uh, we so I think we were moving towards that. So uh, close to the end of our time at the game lab, we uh, so we th so there's two things that happened. I, I remember I so we, we had this. We knew we had a team, right? We had a strong team that that had run a, a, a good game lab for for about five years. Um, then I talked to Hans. I, I I ran the concept by Hans. I'm like you know Hans. Uh, I, we, we have this uh, idea for, for a company. Mm -hmm. um, we have a specific direction that we, we're looking at. So we're, we're basically looking at bringing games across different cultures. Mm -hmm. right? um, and, uh, you know, the, is, is this something that you'd like to discuss further? And then we wanted to know what the investor was thinking. So, uh, Hans, <laughs> sure. you, you, you were yeah. in touch with for a year. You came up with, yeah. you with this idea, so what were you thinking? So first of all, I, I already invested before I arrived in, um, in Singapore in European, in Finnish gaming companies. So in Finland, as we all know, the game industry is quite large, so I made a couple of investments in that particular area. I invested in an Australian company and also actually in a Chinese gaming company. So I was interested in to expanding my portfolio to more Southeast Asia. And, uh, and as Gerald mentioned, I've been introduced by government. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so that was my first point of contact to to Gerald, and we started talking about you know about the, the whole industry and the growth potential of it. Um, I think the, the the Inzen case for me personally was an unusual case because normally I invest later stage, uh, so let's call pre Serie A, mm -hmm. um, and and Gerald was actually more or less a startup. But since I've been talking to Gerald uh, so frequently and share thoughts about the industry, the potential but also his particular, uh, let's say, product and his strategy around that. Uh, I, I started to like, actually, the company and, and you know, start to invest in the business. And for me, uh, what triggered the investment, a couple of things. First of all, what I said before, I was involved very much already from scratch onwards. Mm -hmm. uh, I was involved in product development, uh, but also how, how, do you, how do you expand in case of success to other markets? Uh, we've been working on the business case. We've been working on design, but also recruiting the team, which is, of course, critical for, for, a, for a startup. So I felt pretty confident about uh, InZen, its team, and its capabilities. Um, so that's, that's what triggered the investment at the end. So I, I still see a lot of um, uh, studios, I think, still, in part also, um, because they have a game to show, and that's what some, some investors choose to invest in that. But for you, it was purely the 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 core team basically and the and the 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 vision and the strategy they they had for themselves is that your main reason yeah look i think that that uh, i'm talking about four four years ago i th the, the 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 gaming industry is becoming now more and more transparent um but, but way back then especially in singapore it was a pretty small industry so it was very very difficult not not to select the winners because there were not many companies active in that space, but just to see, okay, how do we, you know, how do we create a growth potential for this for this business? Because we started off in Singapore, which is a pretty small market. How do you, in case of a success in Singapore, expand to uh, to other markets? So it's not only about, of course, the team is is is, is very important, but it's also how do you get out of Singapore in case of success. Mm -hmm. And uh, how, how do you make a difference? What are the comp a couple of cliches, but what are the competitive advantages if you look to, to the game? And more importantly for me, what is, what is the, the growth capital you need for that? Mm -hmm. Because at the end, it's, it's a marketing game. Okay. And so um, um, uh, when we look at uh, um, uh, negotiating, like when you're like... So, what, 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 okay, this is a, is a while ago, right? Um, so, you can also put that in perspective um, with how you think that, how you would have done it today. Um, but, so when you started, I mean, okay, so Hans is interested, you guys know each other. So, so, Gerald, so, so, so at some point you're going to be like, okay, let's talk numbers, let's talk business. So, how did you pitch to Hans and how, how did you, from your, from your side, how did you uh, look at this? Um. So, so I, I'm actually not a fan of pitches. I, 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 I don't like them because it's not a discussion, right? It's a two-sided thing. And for me, it's, it's, uh, it, it really was a discussion. And um, one, it, was, it required uh, us to do a lot of thinking around the, the eventual market, which we were, we were to, to do. Right. Um, so the the background stuff was that we we did we we did um, some research around the markets. We we asked a lot of advisors uh, what key markets, uh, where the key markets are at right now, and and what sort of games can we take to them. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was very. We had to understand that very clearly. We also had to understand. I think one of the things is the just. So I'll talk from outside first. Now I'll talk from from like. What we yeah. what we saw from Hans's side. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. So what I'm I'm getting is like, yeah. okay. So what should you be paying attention? to? You just start your company. You're looking for investment. So yeah. what what are you paying attention of? Like in, in terms of like, okay, this is uh, like in in terms of like, okay, planning for hiring. Uh, yeah. How much capital are you going to need for what? And and how do you pitch that to Hans? Like, how, what were your requirements? What what is important to to look at when you're raising? So I think one of the things is understand what you're raising for. For us, we were raising for an early stage validation. So in, if you go through the process, right, uh, you're investigating, you come up with a hypothesis of what, what the situation looks like. You come up with a rough model of how you're going to get there. And then you sort of break it up into chunks, uh, into stages of how you're going to get there. Uh, with Hans, it really was that 
uh, we raised enough money to help us get to stage one, which is a market validation and also a validation of our team's execution capabilities. So we, we, we put that on the table that, you know, uh, yeah, we, we, need, we did a team budget, a team breakdown for what we needed to get to milestone one and two, uh, which was uh, develop first product, launch first product in the market and understand different partners and different channels within the market. So once we, once we had that in mind, we broke it down into, all right, who do, who do we need in terms of development, in terms of business and stuff like that. And that becomes, the, the largest cost is the manpower cost, right? It's, it's salaries for, for the team. So it's saying, okay, how many months do you need to achieve milestone one and milestone two? Mm -hmm. And then working that backwards to, uh, to that. Uh, so doing your research is, yeah. is very important and actually like planning out the numbers and being able to show that to Hans. Yes. And I think uh, one of the things was also we needed to be very clear with what we wanted from Hans. Uh, so th that's the, the thing where, which, you know, there's actually two sides to the story, right? For me, because we've been, we've been talking for so long, I knew Hans was a great operator. Like you can tell, you can tell from the way he talks. Like he understands systems really well. And I knew that uh, I needed that perspective from him because for me, Hans has built three companies. Uh, for me, I've, I've sort of, yeah, been okay, reasonably successful, but, but it, yeah, it wasn't great, right? And I think one thing that... That's I, what you pitched to him? Okay, yeah. I'm, I'm like... Hans, I'm but now like, you're awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but the thing is, I think it's the, it's, I'm upfront with Hans, and yeah. he's really upfront with me. Okay, and, so being and straight to the point. Yeah, straight to I'm, the point. I'm trying to get uh, dig okay. in a little bit to like key points, like what yeah. do these guys need to focus on, and like what do they have, what do they have to pay, pay attention yeah. to when raising? Because we 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 are discussing three cases, so okay. try yeah. to and like for the others as well, like get get okay. down to the. Okay, so there's two points, right? Understanding your strengths is important. The other thing is actually understanding your weaknesses, and that's where Hans is 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 great because. He's, uh, all right, so an example of, of what I mean by this, it, and this, hasn't, this wasn't just at the start, this is even today. So we had a board meeting uh, last week, right? Uh, all the, the directors coming together, and then, and then Hans was like, you know, Gerald, it's a reminder, it's always a reminder for me, right? Gerald, we, we need to know when things are going, uh, we need to know when things are, uh, are going uh, not according to plan, right? And we need to know that. Right? Or we need to know, we, we don't want to hear the good stuff all the time. Right? The good stuff doesn't really matter. Uh, so, so we can have an accurate picture of, of where things are at. And so that's, that's, the, that's the thing from Hans, because when uh, I think understanding the, uh, the, okay, if we have certain things that are not in our structure, what do we need to, to what mm -hmm. resources do we need to mobilize? Yeah. in order to get stuff in place. Yeah. And that's really what the investment thing is about, right? It's effective, effectively mobilizing resources so that you can achieve certain outcomes. Okay. And being very clear with right. what you can and you cannot do with your current structure. Yeah. Yeah. So he's right. very good at the structural stuff. Very, very smart. Yeah. So, so uh, let me ask you the first thing. Okay, so Gerald says, okay, he, he made a, a plan, showed it to you. So uh, as an investor, uh, you look at the plan, um, what do you look at when you get that? that? And then also, as like he, he might be asking for a certain valuation, but like, how do you, as an investor, say like, okay, I I do think they're worth that. I think they're more worth more than that, or I think actually like this evaluation is too high. Like, how, how do you make? Yeah. So <laughs> first of all, I think in general, if you look to early stage investors, they work with um, different mechanics, uh, uh, straight for investment in in equity, or or they also use a convertible note to avoid the discussion around valuation. I assume that everybody is, is, is aware of, of, of and understand what a convertible note is. So it's actually kind of a loan which you convert in equity later on. Again, to avoid the whole discussion around valuation. I think that's the biggest challenge for, for an early stage investor to, to find out, okay, what is this company really worth? And, and at the end, what is my potential return on investment? So what we've done, of course, what I mentioned before, you know, since we've been talking so long about the, the business for one year, I had a fair understanding about its potential. It was not about the valuation. It was about, okay, if, what do we really need to, to hit those milestones? So 
first of all, if you go out and start raising capital, uh, indeed make sure that, you're, that, you, you, know, that you have a, a very competitive uh, uh, proposition which an investor understands. You know, you're not talking to, uh, always talking to sophisticated guys who understand the gaming industry. Uh, you, you talk mostly to investors who invest in different industries, like what, what I've done. Uh, so make sure that the guys you're talking to really understand what, what your proposition is, what your competitive advantage is, but also make, make you create a peer group that you say, look, you know, we are a company and you can compare us with company ABC, etc., etc. Secondly, especially for early stage, it's all about runway. You want to know, okay, when is this company running out of cash? How long will that take? And you know, with the money we provide them, uh, what, what are they going to realize? You know, so you have to agree upfront with the company uh, very specific milestones. So I always measure performance against budget. Yeah, so it's at the end a numbers game, and I think that's the biggest challenge for for gaming company, companies who have a very creative mind. Make sure that you have somebody on board who can do the financial modeling. So spend a lot of time on your proposition. Uh, make sure that your investor understand what you're what you're offering, uh, why you're different, what the potential of, of your business is, but also spend a lot of time on your budget and 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 do the, do proper modeling because that's what the investors also do, uh, and you know it saves them a lot of time at the end. Yeah, I, th I think that's not just for the investor, right? Like just to to round uh, you guys up, so that's not just for the investor, right? I think, um, and you're as you said, you're still learning that today is that, um, like having realistic models, like the budgets shouldn't just like be attractive to investors, they actually have to be a little bit realistic because they're that's going to help you, right? Yes? So, yeah. please uh, uh, keep it sweet and short. Okay. Uh, so I can move yeah. over to... Uh, just just to, to add to what Hans said, right? I think what's been very useful for us is, uh, um, yeah, you, we, we have to be realistic with the models. At the same time, we have to understand the larger economic picture where... Uh, which markets, uh, how each markets are doing uh, at any one point in time, especially when you build the plan. So, for example, with any execution plan, uh, perhaps like 10 months, 10 to 12 months is a decent time frame to, to be able to assess what you can or cannot do within a particular market. So it gives you enough room to make investigations. So 10 to 12 months, understanding the economic cycle of your eventual uh, possibly sort of target channels or target regions, mm -hmm understanding the stage of growth of that. So for example, for us... So, no, yeah. so yeah. Try, try to uh, leave out the examples of this okay, point. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah, just being very clear of, of that. So you understand how much room, you understand the playing field, you understand how much room you have to play within the market and where your eventual outcome will be if you play well. I think that's, and, and all that has to be modeled financially. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. All right, thanks guys. Uh, give a quick, uh, the, the panel is not over, but uh, give these two guys a hands up. Uh, <laughs> so uh, moving over to, uh, to Nixon and uh, Gabby. Um, yes. Like really quick, how did you met, uh, meet uh, Nix? How did you guys get in touch? So uh, I met Nix through technology circles in the Philippines. He was already an active technology investor, I think that's my, seven years ago, and that was still in my first game company. So we've kept in touch since then, and apart from investing in game companies, uh, Nix had also started within Servas, Surpass, a game distribution business around web games around three or four years ago. So I know that uh, he was interested in the space, and I also know that he's a huge gamer and personally plays tower defense games whenever he's not doing anything. So when, uh, when we were uh, going to start a new company, he was really top of mind for us when, when we were ready to start. Okay. So again, like um, we're seeing consistency here. Uh, meet people and stay in touch frequently. Um, yeah, and also for something. investors, like they want to know you personally and they want to know if they can trust you, if you can operate. So, like, meet them way before you need funding. Yeah. So, trust is, uh, is key between uh, the two of you as well. So, um, and so, uh, okay, so you, you, knew, you knew Nick for a while. You know he was a tower defense uh, fanatic. And uh, and um, so I uh, want to start Altitude Games, and so you reach out to Nix. Did you start again? I'm going to ask you the same. It's like at the point where you started talking to Nix about this. Is like, did you have a game to show him? Did you have a core team? What what did you have at the point when you? Started uh, so we had talking? no game. We had no prototype. It wasn't even a game idea. It was uh, it was a team, and uh, specific specifically, it was a team of probably the the most experienced game developers in the Philippines. So there were 
five of us who were going to start a team with uh, around 12 years experience each in the game industry had worked together before in teams in different companies and we pretty much knew that we wanted to start a company together and we knew how to work together and and when we went to next it's not us uh, like we have a company pitching uh, like pitching our idea it's really a uh, like here's a really experienced team in games and we know that we can ship product and uh, we actually ask for a lot of help in thinking through the, the business planning. Mm -hmm. All right. And so, next, um, Gabby approached you. Was so, my version of the story, I guess. Oh, oh <laughs> here it comes. This is the I haven't heard this I've, before. I've known. It's going to be juicy. So, I've known Gabby for a while. And I think over those, as he had mentioned, seven years. I think over those seven years, he was uh, pre-wiring me already about this, about Altitude Games. So he would always, he was, I mean, Gabby's very established in the Philippines uh, as a games authority. And every time I would consult uh, about anything about games, he would be my go-to guy. And throughout all of those years of casual conversation, he would always say, you know, someday I would really want to put up my own uh, game studio and this is my vision for it. And I know just the right guys uh, uh, who will join me once it's finally established. But it was a very open-ended thing. And, you know, when he finally said, uh, now's the time, I think it, it, it really, you know, as a typical investor would typically ask, like, you know, what kind of games will you produce? What areas will you go to? How will you make money? None of that even, uh, none of those really came out of my mouth when I had conversed with him. I don't so suggest I just, this. I don't <laughs> suggest this trap for so everyone. It may not be. Yeah, the gestation period may not be your average gestation period, but I think, you know, I mean, con what's important there is really the level of comfort, plus the track record, really, of the team. Eh? Uh, someone might always be able to pitch a vision. Someone might always be able to pitch, let's say, uh, this is where I want to go. I want to go global. All of those things you'll probably hear all the time. But track record, for me, is really the most important criteria. Uh, if someone has been successful before, uh, the probability of success after also ex becomes very high. The other thing I've noticed is a lot of uh, uh, good producers of content, whether that be visual content, audio content, or games content, uh, the skill set of the production of the content is very different from the skill set of the distribution and the monetization. And that's really been the strength of our group uh, at Surpass. So we said, uh, we're really willing to bet on companies that can produce very good content uh, because we're quite uh, uh, confident with the channels that we're able to establish and our ability to create exposure for the companies that we're aligned with. So again, I, I, I'm trying to get the key points here again. So when Hans just moved to Singapore, he wanted to find a thought leader, somebody who could explain to him the, the landscape of the industry. And so now again, uh, for for Nix, Gabby was also his main go-to guy. So uh, I think it, it it makes investors feel more comfortable if you are in within the local circles are known as a thought leader. So um, I, I think it's fair to say that pay a lot of attention. Like if you want to lead a new company, make sure that you get out there a lot and that people recognize you as somebody that knows what he's doing. And, um, and and stay in touch, right? So, yes. so um, um, I didn't get a lot of that into you guys. What I'm very interested with you guys is that, okay, so um, you invested, um, right? And, and so um, um, we can ask you next, it's like, so how involved uh, with Gabby are you like right now? In, in what terms? <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry? Just kidding. Yeah, yeah in business. <laughs> Uh, well, for us, I mean, Altitude Games, if you look at the founders and if you look at the team that they've assembled, uh, there's really a lot of domain knowledge when it comes to game development that exists there. Although I may enjoy playing games, uh, I have no illusion that I really know much about the, you know, the, the process of making a game. So uh, at Surpass, we leave Altitude Games completely autonomous. Um, they choose what kind of genres they want to enter. Uh, they choose the the mechanics of the game. Uh, you know which channels to, or, or rather, which platforms to develop it for. 
uh, we might give advice, we might, we might uh, you know, give information, research, uh, some insights, but ultimately 100% of the decisions are theirs. Like uh, our goal is really to, to help push their content and uh, monetize, help them monetize it. Okay. Um, and, and so, uh, Gabby, um, for you, so Nix is very hands off um, in your case, right? So, do you agree with him or do you actually think that he's actually bringing a lot to the table for you? Like, uh, how, well, no, he does, I, he I, 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 draw, that's not what I mean. He but doesn't you know what you know what I mean. Like, come he on, doesn't draw don't, any don't of our sense. assets for sure. But uh, for us, uh, at Altitude, so our distribution and release uh, I guess process for our games is two step. And so making a free-to-play game that can make money around the world is very, I guess, expensive to make because it's very iterative. Mm -hmm. And you can only really launch a game worldwide if you know that like, your metrics are there and you're reasonably sure that like, you can, the money you can pour in marketing for the game, be it whether app install ads or just partnering with the publisher, uh, can really make back to, through the, because the mechanics are good and, and the hooks are there and people are willing to pay. So, uh, because that is relatively expensive, it's it's very good for us to have a strategic partner that has uh, a business model that we can give games a little earlier and and monetize to them before we we actually go worldwide. So we started in March 2014 and we started developing our 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 first game, Run and Super Five. Practically like the first day we started, like figuring out Unity, like figuring out what exactly the the game would be like, and then. Uh, uh, creating an MVP of that for, for the first 10 weeks of his existence. And within uh, the 10th month by December, uh, we had already launched the game in the Philippines via Surpass. Uh, because they, they have, uh, they're really good at marketing through telco users and, and help in, uh, in the billing through, through telco payments, things like that. Uh, we're able to, to do some monetization already, which helps Defray the cost of the development for us while we iterate towards going worldwide. And so, um, um, okay, so okay, I'm, I'm, I'm ma game mechanics, etc. You make your own decisions, etc. Um, but I, I know Nix is extremely experienced, uh, like an ex extremely experienced businessman. So, like, so you pick your first investor, uh, and there will be future investments, right? That's, yeah. So, how how important is that to your first investor, is that really the guy that also has to be able to help you uh, track the future rounds? Is that a, very, yeah, is that a key? Yeah, definitely. Uh, one of the largest advantages of having Nixon board is that it helped us figure out the thought process about like getting uh, investment in, in the later rounds. Mm -hmm. So when we raised money in, in the seed round, we only raised money actually enough for uh, from March to December of 2014. And, and there's a number of reasons for that. Like one is that uh, at the start, the investors don't want to give you too much money because like you might, like, you might start dreaming of making an MMO instead of a mobile game. Uh, second is that like, uh, also in terms of valuation, if you get a lot of money early, it means that uh, the founders will have a lot more dilution and will own le less of the company. So uh, the seed funding is supposed to provide you with a product that can either get you to a uh, proof of concept prototype, or in our case, something that we could actually launch in a small market. So just ask what you need, and don't. And if an investor offers you more, maybe actually say, "No, I don't need that much." Um, we the fundraising actually takes a very long time. So yeah. uh, as probably as early as June of 2014, I was already fundraising for for this year, mm -hmm. um, and it, it was a long process. I pitched a lot of people, and a lot of people said no. Uh, but that's really how it is. But also showing people and going back to them and showing them the progress in the game, how the team is doing, mm -hmm. and showing that like you're 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 a credible team that won't go away when there's a slight setback. It it's a very reassuring thing for investors as well. So um, thanks. Uh, and so last question for you, Nick. So, so uh, as an investor, um, you invested in uh, how many investments have you done into in mobile game companies? How I think one. <laughs> one. Are you are you planning to to make more? Do you think this no, is a we, sector we, that's we built mobile games communities uh, in in our company, but mm -hmm. as an external investment, one. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, um, but but so we've, we've invested in other 
uh, components of the games ecosystem. So yes. we've invested in a mobile loyalty platform. Mm -hmm. We've invested in a in a currency platform, things like those. So, yeah. but in terms of the generation of content, Altitude Games is the first. And so your investor sentiment, uh, right? Because for example, in the U.S., it's cooled down a bit. Um, some companies have not delivered what they said they would when they attracted massive investments. But for you, uh, we definitely hear, uh, listen to more, uh, more pitches and, and be interested in, in exploring, uh, investing in more uh, Philippine uh, uh, indies or? Uh, is that, well, is, a lot of our investments are actually outside the Philippines as well. So yeah. as long as we feel that uh, you know, the, the track record of the team is there, uh, you know, they've, they've, or there's an interesting technology and that we can also provide a lot of value in return. I mean, not just capital. Then we'd always be open to consider it. All right. Thanks, guys. Give it up for them. <laughs> Last but definitely not least, um, uh, I'm very interested in this because Apoda is definitely a, a leader within the ecosystem as well. And uh, these two investors are not uh, necessarily um, uh, like very like uh, active experts in the in developing mobile games etc. But Apoda definitely knows. Uh, knows that, right? So, um, uh, so that's going to be very interesting. I, I, a very different, uh, again, a very different angle. So, so, how did you guys? <laughs> I know the questions. <laughs> I know the questions. Uh, actually, uh, we we were the gamers friends before. Yeah, at that time, uh, well, I I I was one of the first developer who used Avatar uh, platform. And then they, they chat me, oh, you are a producer of Heroes of Other and Scowers. At that time, I, I was the producer of that project, a mobile game of Game Love. And they are playing that game. So they asked me, oh, what is the next uh, event? What, how can I get more game, more champs? So we are friends. We were friends before. We, um, and then when I quit Game Love, uh, I am some friends, some colleagues. Uh, we we start joy entertainment, and then uh, we met we uh, we met the first uh, 3D online game in mobile. And at that time, we just uh, developed our own uh, 3D game engine, uh, and we have one like simple demo, uh, one just uh, characters run in the room and shoot, uh, and then we, we ran out of money and we, we try to license our game. And I come to every game publisher in Vietnam, but no one wants to publish our game because it's just a simple uh, demo. They, they hardly, they, they, they didn't believe that we can mat, we, uh, we, we can uh, uh, mat the game. We, uh, and then uh, uh, I asked, uh, Tonan and Quang for some advice, and uh, he uh, and they introduced me to one publisher, and they they bought our license, and uh, and then uh, uh, they asked me, uh, do you need more money? Uh, do you need uh, us to help you to uh, set up uh, and uh, support your uh, your business? Uh, and then I, I said yes, and uh, they 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 told me. Oh, come come to our office uh, and we discuss, and then I fly to Hanoi because uh, we we are based in Ho Chi Minh City, mm -hmm. and we fly to like nearly 2,000 kilometers uh, to Hanoi, and then after one day we finalize the deal, and overnight, we have, <laughs> so and we have investment. So it's very interesting. So you started the company with your own money, yes, yes, and you started working on a demo, and you start to run out of money. You were getting a need, and thankfully, uh, I, so let me add on so for, I, uh, for the story. Uh, my yeah. CEO and I and our team is, were working on the content distribution, so we need to understand the content. So we had to play game every day. So at that time, uh, in middle of 2013, uh, we talk. Uh, oh, 2012. Uh, we started with the uh, Abota Got Talent, some kind of the uh, reward for the developer who get the highest download in our platform, if from their application, and then his team, that time his team working for 
uh, game note and he won the one dollar prize is an iPod but that is very good for the developer because they need the device to test and and then we kept keep the connection uh, from that and then he introduced for the game hero order and chaos for us to play together a mobile game bring time from game note and we play a lot and we from the playing game together, we understanding more each other for personality, and we find he is very uh, ambitious and passionate guy who love to build up the game and for the million of people who want to play because he already did it in game note with his team to serve the million of people around the world from their his production, and um, and then from Abota, our visiting model is a. Uh, bring the content to the user so we need content so if we need content we have to find the developer to work with and that's why we also not only joy we also invest for many other uh, studio uh, to bring them in-house and also outside but the most Fantastic. important is that we Fantastic. try we try to help the developer in vietnam to bring their product outside and then after we talk with Zhang Eng and his team and we talk and then well, we just contribute small uh, amount of money but we contribute more than that on the business network, how we do the marketing to help them and how to connect them with the other publisher and even us also can be the publisher. And right now we are the publishing, uh, publisher of uh, Captain Stry, the mobile shooting TPS uh, game. And we crossed over one million downloads globally uh, just three months. So, yeah. Congratulations. Uh, the story is so simple that we got Abota doing content business. So this is a developer, so, so we had to work closer. Yeah. And so what he already had to show you, what he was already working on, that was also a big selling point for you. So like actually seeing part of uh, the product, the demo, was, uh, was also something that... As the, beginning, as the beginning, just idea, Zhang uh, told, I want to make a... a he really liked to make the uh, e-support mobile game. Neither game can make the people vs each other in the arena. So he said, I will go into make a shooting game. And modern combat that time is a very famous around the world. So he said, I had an idea and demo a prototype, very simple. So he just saw it in the in the laptop and we said, okay. So we believe you can make things better. So three months later, he showed me a prototype better than that. And we decide, okay, we need to help this guy. Because at that time he ran out of money. <laughs> so, so can I ask you, uh, guy, like, I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Yeah. C A. Yeah. Eh? G A. And okay, and so um, if you go back, okay, so it, it ended up well for you, right? But um, so these guys they actually went raising before they uh, started uh, working on the product. They made their strategy, and then they start to, they found their investor, and then they start working on their product, right? Building the actual product. So if you could go back, do you think still like? Starting to use your own money and start first starting to build, work on the product, and then uh, after once you're starting to run out of money, like really look for investors. That would you change that now? Would you say like, okay, if I could go back, maybe it was smarter to first focus on the strategy, the the pitch, and first uh, focus on finding uh, an investor, and then uh, start working on the product. Would you change anything, or do you think it's still the right way to go? First build, and then. Uh, I, I think I choose the right way, uh, at the, because in Vietnam, like we are just one of the few studios, and the rest is just uh, indies, one just one guy or two guy, and nobody there to to set up an, a real uh, developers company, because uh, the first thing is, uh, the producer they don't want to buy the game from Vietnamese developers, they don't believe that. We can make a good game. The more than ninety percent games in Vietnam uh, are from China, the, the Chinese uh, developers. So when we start, like no no one believed. So we can we couldn't fi find the, the the fund. So we have to use our own money mm -hmm. and set up and prepare for the demo. So I think we have we can do all the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, you didn't. It's it's a different landscape, I guess, also in Vietnam. Um, um, so it's uh, it's good to understand as well. And so I can understand that uh, Apoda didn't just bring money to keep you guys alive, but I, I imagine they're also bringing a lot of uh, different resources, right? So, so um, that's uh, you can either have an investor like Hans, also very experienced uh, entrepreneur that can help you 
uh, and like uh, teach you like how to better run your business and how to better plan, etc. Um, and you found an investor that can also bring different types of resources uh, to the table, right? So what, what is Zapota, for example, uh, key? Like, what key kind of resources uh, uh, do you get from from Apoda? Uh, because at that time, Apoda was a, a startup uh, as well. So they provide their experience how to get user, how to set up the good the, uh, structure of um, shareholder, how to uh, set up the, um, the vision for the team. So that's the, the, the experience that we can find anywhere else. So I think it's the most important thing we got from Avatar. And later they, they helped me to publish the games outside Vietnam to, uh, to engage the user. So thanks for that. Great. And um, so, so Apoda is investing in, in, in many studios right now in, in, in Vietnam? Yeah, we, had, uh, we did investment for five studios, and including Joy. But Joy is the number one right now. And so after Frappy Bird, I think uh, Joy, Entertain Joy Entertainment is the second studio can bring the game across the million download globally. So they are going to make a mobile game. You know, Vain Glory is some kind of phenomenon right now in the world, but they had another idea of, of how to make the mobile game. So we're also interested in that and try to help them to leverage that kind of game. Uh, at this moment, uh, we try to invest more for in the, even the individual or uh, the studio who had the game in Vietnam, because we, uh, we also want to help the industry and the never up the studio more upper and to catch the uh, international standard from that. And also, uh, the game game industry and game development is uh, in Vietnam is uh, not so a lot of good programmer, but to gathering uh, the means one and to make uh, a product from the idea is not so easy because uh, they mostly working for the game company from Japan or game nope like that. They were trained just doing some simple job or just only focus on their job tasks on that, not the overview the picture how to make the game together and build up the team. So normally startup in Vietnam need to learn a lot of and special for games. They need to learn a lot, a lot, not only for production. They need to learn how to build the company, how to make the product has a unique uh, selling point, and how to sell the product to another or cooperate with the publisher or other thing. That is a lot of things they need to uh, to do. So we invest not only the money, we also contribute to help them because we also start up uh, the recent three year. We grow very fast and we understand how to do that. So we want to share this experience, help them to build the structure, uh, how to train the people, how to manage the project, everything from that. So they can make the product and also we can be the publisher from them. So that both sides, from the production side to the uh, business side, we have um, the both. And also we had to introduce them to the investor if we know. Yeah, so potential. Great. All right, thanks guys. Uh, give it a hands up uh, for them. I, I, I really hope, uh, um, also for the investors, I think it's fantastic that you guys are, um, that you are uh, investing and uh, enabling these guys to make games uh, here in Southeast Asia. I, I, I really think uh, that getting more, uh, comp uh, more investors and uh, also um, like, uh, more industry leaders um, to invest more in these uh, studios, um, I really think um, like, uh, supporting the, the local talent here in Southeast Asia is very key. Um, so I wanted to, to do uh, like a 10 minute Q&A, but unfortunately this took a little bit longer than, than planned. Uh, but um, um, I unfortunately, just like uh, Sergio um, I have to, <laughs> from Google, I have to limit it to one question. So the first one that raises his hand right now gets to ask a question. Nobody wants to ask a question. Over there? Yeah. I have to run to save time. Run, Jesse, run. Thank you. Hi, guys. Uh, William Chan from Comedy Media here. Um, this is a question more for the investors. Um, when you're looking at investing into a games developer, are you looking more into like companies who are able to 
really influence the Southeast Asian market and Asia market, or are you looking for people who have a more global kind of uh, perspective? Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for the question. It's actually a very good one. Um, yeah, I, I, th I personally think that um, that the, the, the potential of, of Southeast Asia and Asia in general is, is huge. So, for, so my investment focus is becoming more and more local. Uh, if you look to, and also based on, on, on the Google presentation of Sergio, if you, if, you, if you look to the gaming market in Southeast Asia, and, and again, Asia in general, it's become more and more advanced. Uh, you see the RPUs and the lifetime value of yours is going up. It's becoming more and more interesting to put money into this uh, very particular area. But it, it's becoming a global play because, again, the market has become more advanced. So I'm looking for games uh, and game studios with a very specific focus on, for example, Vietnam, Indonesia, etc., etc. So large markets. Then that I just look for a kind of global play uh, for a hit, which is, you know, let's be honest, it's, it's, it's become more and more irrealistic. So for me, it's all about going local. Next, what about you? Um companies with a global focus or more with like uh, an Asia or Southeast Asia focus? Uh, <clears throat> for me, I think the opportunity for digital content should always be globally focused. But having said that though, uh, you know, prove, uh, a market like the Philippines will be proving grounds. Uh, it has to you know, have some level of traction in terms of uh, you know, monetization elements, uh, gameplay elements. Uh, stickiness and all of that. So uh, refine and polish it in the Philippines, start to bring it out outside the Philippines in the region, and then depending on how that works there, then also uh, expand beyond that. So global potential, but, but local initial start and launch. Okay, but that would not work, for example, for a studio based in Singapore, where there is like a market that's too small uh, to support a company, for uh, example. So. Uh, <laughs> no, that's it's true. Then, then the right. definition of local probably can expand beyond Singapore uh, okay. in that respect. It just so happens that we're in the Philippines and we have a large enough population and enough smartphone users and, and at least uh, from a synergy standpoint, Surpass has had a lot of success, uh, uh, historical success in monetizing the Filipino consumer. So we'd want to play to our strengths. But I can imagine if the studio is based outside the Philippines, uh, mm -hmm. then... The, the definition of what the launch pad market is, market is or launch market is can expand beyond their home country. So Nix is going for uh, digital content should be global. Um, Hans um, is um, uh, betting, like I can say betting, on the, on the large and, and developing markets. And uh, but I know you are investing also a lot to help the Vietnamese, uh, uh, the, the Vietnamese ecosystem. But uh, should the, the, the ones you're investing in, like, it's like, do they have games that they want to make global or are they uh, go, yeah, going for the Vietnamese market? Yeah, we invest for both. Uh, for developers, some developers, they just want to make the game fit the uh, local market. And they need a amount of money from that to finish the development. And they also need the, the publishing uh, from that, publishing job for that. And we, after we review the idea, prototype, everything, we put the money for them. And they finish the product, and we also publish in Vietnam for them as well. And secondly, we also invest uh, looking for the uh, the studio who has the ambitious to make the game for the global market, Night Choi. And and then we invest in that and try to help them not only for the publishing, which we can introduce them to another publisher we know. Yeah. So basically, we like to invest in both because uh, we based in Vietnam, so we're strong in Vietnam. So we want to also to help the developer to earn money from Vietnam markets as well. And Vietnam in South Asia is a very good market for mobile gaming. So that is what our, the first point. And second, uh, look around the South Asia and then uh, the total globally is the. The game is, itself sometimes can, well, lucky like Frappy Bird can be happen again for anybody in the, in the world and any game in the world. So maybe someday uh, some game can, can win, achieve that again. Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. And, and, and thank you as well. That was a really fantastic question. I think they all answered the question fantastically. Um, Gerald? A small, uh, a small plug. Okay, but it should take less than 15, less than 15 seconds. <laughs> Yeah, okay, this is a very small plug for uh, one of our investors, the Incubate Fund, uh, Masahiko Homa. 
there will be an announcement. If you're an indie studio, uh, there'll be an announcement later in the Indie Pitch Arena at 5 p.m. So look out for that. That's, that's All right. the talk. Yeah. All right, okay, that's fair enough. All right, guys, give a hands up. And also, um, um, all the speakers that we've invited to this conference are all very, very approachable. Um, so also, feel free not to just listen to them when they're on stage. Also, like afterwards, just like walk up to them and uh, have a chat with them. That's completely fine. I'm very sorry, Jesse, for, for taking too long. Um,